Hello, am I audible to all? Yes, sir. My screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, so today I'm going to start with the uh, practical implementation of linear regression. Okay, so here I'm using uh, pandas for importing the data, matplotlib for uh, plotting uh, your for plotting the graphs. Okay, and here this is the matplotlib inline because uh, I'm using the offline mode. That's why I'm using inline. Okay. And uh, here, uh, what is the uh, assumption of linear regression? So first assumption is data should be linear regression, uh, linear related with target variable. Okay, error value tends to be zero. Uh, there should be not, there should not be a multicolonality between columns. You know what is multicolonality? No. Okay, colonality. Uh, yes. Yes, anybody knows? No, sir. Okay, so multicolonality is in a uh, colonality between the columns means uh, in this column and this column. Check uh, uh, the uh, both columns are multicolonality with e multicolonality with each other or not. Okay, means suppose this is my x one. Suppose this is x one, x two, and x three. So check this is collinear with this one or not this is collinear with this one or this is also collinear with this one like this so if it is collinear between uh, uh, means uh, x1 with x2 x2 with x3 so first of all uh, remove this okay then uh, remove this or you can uh, do one thing you can merge the columns okay and you can uh, drop one any one column also and uh, remedies for the multicolonality, we can ignore it, remove one variable, means remove, you can remove any one columns and combine the correlated variables. Okay. So first of all, import the this advertisement CSV. This is my advertisement CSV. Here I am using this uh, df dot shape. First of all, check the shape of mm, the data. So, uh, there are 200 rows and five columns. Okay, one, two, three, four, and five. This is uh, unnecessary. Okay, so here I'm checking uh, is there any null values are present or not? So, no, there is no null values present. If null values are present, then you can uh, change with the help of mean, mode, median. Okay, now also check the data type, data type, and information also. Okay, now first of all, check the um, relation between my every column with the target variable and what is my target variable sales sales is my target variable okay so here i am using the scatter plot because a scatter plot is used for uh, find the relationship between the two variables okay so here i am using df1 dot plot kind scatter plot so in between tv and sales then radio and sales and newspaper and sales okay so you can see this data and this data is uh, this data is uh, linear, linear, uh, linear, linear distributed, and this is also okay, but this is not. So you can use the linear uh, regression, okay. So then here I am using only one column for prediction. So feature TV. So here I am using this one with the help of this one predict the sale, okay. So df1 feature call feature call what is feature call tv so this is my x1 and this is my x uh, y y is my sales one so here i'm using this uh, linear regression uh, inside this sklearn linear model linear regression uh, is present so first of all lm equals to linear regression and fit your model and what is uh, the data x is this one and y is this one okay now check lm dot intercept and what is my in intercept this is one and uh, the coefficient coefficient is this one okay now uh, find the this min min value and max value and uh, why we and uh, we are finding this uh, min or value and max value for creating the 
best fit line. Okay, so what is my uh, minimum, minimum value? 0 0.7 and maximum value is this one. Okay, so here I'm using this predict lm dot uh, predict x new. So uh, x new use this one and this one and this one is my uh, best fit line. So in between this to this, we can see 7.065 here and end to 21 point this one. So this is my best fit line. Okay, so uh, this code is for the best fit line. X new means this one and prediction this one. Okay, and uh, then use uh, this dotted column for X TV and Y scale, Y sales. So this is my best fit line. Okay, now here I'm using the whole data. First of all, use the train test split. Uh, you all know what is train test split? Sir, which line? Yes, Nida, which, uh, which line means? Yes, I got it. It was best fit line. Yes, yeah. best fit line. So, everybody knows uh, what is train test split? No, sir. Yes. You see some data for training purpose and some data for testing purpose. Yes, what split your data in the train and test. Okay, so inside this SQL and modular selection, this train test split is present. And uh, if you uh, forgot this, then you can search on Google like to train, train test split SQL. Okay, so you can import from here also. Okay, copy this and paste it over here. Okay, no need to uh, learn everything, every library. Okay, search on Google and then you can use. Sir, what is the purpose for using this? Train test, na? Yes, sir. Yes, wait a minute. Yes, train test. First of all, uh, divide your data in the train test. Means X train, X test, Y train, Y test. And this is my train test split. Put the X value and Y value. Okay. And test size. What is my test size? Suppose if I have did if I have hundred data, hundred lines of data, then uh, separate your eighty lines for the train and twenty. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 75. 75 for train. Okay. And 25 for test. This means 0 0.25 means 25%. Okay. 25% of the data. And random state, random state is 42. You can use any random state like 1, 2, 1, 42, 3, 4, any random state. Random state like a seed function. You know, all know seed. You know oh, what? Sir. Yes, seed, uh, seed is a function in the uh, NumPy. Suppose uh, if I am using uh, this one, random, random dot uh, rand, randint, okay. And then generate any value, one to 200, okay. Then create 10 values. So, Every time if you uh, uh, if you are going to execute uh, again and again this one, then uh, it will generate uh, different different values. If you use np dot random dot seed, okay, seed, then and uh, you can use any like one one one, okay. So it will generate the same values always, okay, in your computer and my computer also. If uh, you use one one one. And then uh, execute it, then it will generate the same values in your computer and my computer, any work from you. And uh, if you use like 112, then the same. The so same is for the seed function, uh, random state. Random function, uh, random state always takes, suppose if you take. So, uh, so we have to always take 42 for random state? No, no, you can use any one. 42 is the like uh, uh, best 
or you can use one to one, one to one, one to uh, hundred, uh, one to any anything. Random state means suppose if I if you have uh, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So okay, and suppose if you take test thirty, so it means seventy percent of data is my train, okay, and thirty percent is test okay and random state 42 if you uh, are not using this one random state then it will take i like suppose um, in the first time it will take this one two three as a uh, test and this all the train and uh, in, if you use the second time then it will take this three for the test and one two three seven eight nine ten for the train okay then it will change the value every time so that's why i'm using random state always take suppose 42 takes suppose uh, not uh, for uh, sure. Uh, suppose 42 takes only this seven, one to seven. Okay. And the test is for eight. So always take this values. Okay. That's why I'm using random state. Okay. Now clear. So, sir, we can take rep 42 every time. No, you can change it. La. You can use uh, this. You can use any value. Uh, wait a minute. X. Like what, what can be its range? Like, uh, what can be its range? Random. Uh, there is no range, I think. Uh, wait a minute. I think no range. Uh, random state scalar. So random state as well. Everybody take like 42 uh, for the best. Okay, you can use anything. Uh, so 42 is only the best one. Yes, 42. And uh, you can use the uh, like uh, Gitz or CV also, means uh, parameter, uh, hyperparameter tuning also. Okay. So you can uh, use the hyperparameter parameter tuning for the random state also. Means in which random state uh, uh, my model will give you the best result. Okay. So you can use this parameter with the help of uh, Gitz or CV. Okay. Now clear, create a fun create a function with the help of this one. Okay. And uh, uh, I think there is no random subsidy. What you said about hyper guessing that hyper parameter tuning. Yes, sir. I didn't get that. Hyperparameter tuning means suppose um, in the linear regression there is no hyper uh, there is no uh, parameters like uh, I think three to four parameters. I think uh, suppose if you uh, go in the uh, okay, yeah. okay, if you check in the decision tree, there are so many parameters like criterion split max depth minimum state minimum leaf sample there are so many uh, parameters so you can use this with the help of hyperparameter tuning hyperparameter tuning means uh, uh, you don't know what is the best uh, one for criterion guinea is best entropy is best or log loss is best you you, you don't know what uh, in the split best uh, best split is best or random uh, split is best in the max step you uh, don't know what is the max step is good for our uh, uh, our model so that's why here i'm uh, so you we are using this one uh hyper parameter tuning grid cell cp okay grid cell cp Okay, so this is my Gitz or CV. You can uh, import this Gitz or CV and then use Gitz or CV. Okay, and what is this? This is my model name. And what is my model name? My model name is L1, LM, LM1. Okay, then what is this parameter? You can use this parameters and is equals to here you give kernel, but uh, if you use uh, this is for I think SVM, if you use decision tree. Then use criterion uh, colon and give the criterion here. Then comma uh, use split splitter 
then uh, here is splitter and then give the this one max depth then you can use the third uh, comma third one max depth and you can give two three four five six is a max depth okay then put the, your parameter here okay then fit your data fit uh, cl uh, clf dot fit and fit your data what is your data x train and y train okay and then execute this after executing this then uh, write the clf dot best param uh, this one uh, best param best param best param i think is, is no correct okay so if you use the best param so it will give you the best parameter for your uh, model means what is your what is the best parameter for your model Sir, Yes. Sir, but why to make it complex? Uh, if we can use forty two as the random state, then why we why uh, we use okay. one two three? Uh, wait a minute. I have an example for you. Okay, so uh, if you are going uh, in exam, okay, so you know what is your question? What is the question in the exam? Before the exam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know? You don't know, na? Yes, sir. So no, sir. yes sir. yes this is the best example so you don't know what is the best parameter for our model okay so okay, that's why sir. i am using this uh, grid search cv so grid search cv choose the best parameter for the best accuracy okay sir okay now clear yes sir yes so you can use this grid search cv or random search cv also uh, random. There are two methods for finding the parameters. This one, random search CV and the grid search CV. Okay. Now clear, everything is clear. Now fit your data linearization, then use the X train and Y train. Okay. Now, what is the score? Give X train and Y train at the time of training. What is your uh, <clears throat> accuracy? So at the time of training, the accuracy is 60. Okay, and you can see here, uh, previously my accuracy is 50, I think uh, near to 50. And if you change the, here is 42. So you can see the, you see. Okay, so this is a random state works. One, two, three. And uh, now you can check, the at the time of testing, what is the accuracy? So you can see 63. Before it, uh, it is 42 and before it is 66. Okay, now this is the best model, not a best model <laughs> uh, for this one. There is no under, uh, uh, this is a underfitted model because at the time of training, at the time of testing, and the both one, uh, we haven't to a best. Uh, uh, best accuracy. So this is the underfitting. You all know what is underfitting and overfitting? Any idea? One. No, sir. Okay. Anybody have? In training, we get uh, high accuracy and in test, we get low accuracy. That, that which one? In which one? Overfitting. Overfitting, yes. So at the time of training, uh, yes. Overfitting yes. uh, uh, con uh, contact with the most value. Uh, if we draw a line, it uh, have uh, uh, all value. But underfitting, it uh, contain uh, a less num uh, a less number of value. No, 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 no. Overfitting means so, uh, like train accuracy is less than test accuracy. Then we can say underfitting. No, and no, test overfitting. Accuracy, uh, no train accuracy train, is less train accuracy. than test accuracy. Train, then, no, uh, uh, overfitting is this. My train accuracy is good 
at the time of testing my accuracy will be bad this is the overfitting and what is underfitting yeah. at the time of training and the testing both uh, at the time of training and testing as well uh, sorry sorry trying to say at the time of testing as well as training okay my accuracy will not be good this is the overfitting sorry underfitting okay so suppose at the time of training my uh, accuracy is like good or bad like yeah. no, how much uh, we decide like 80% or something like uh, below below uh, you can say below 70 okay is not good it's bad yes no yes it's bad ever so seven... what causes so what causes these underfitting and overfitting of the data no in the data uh, uh, underfitting and overfitting is uh, not depend on the data depend on the accuracy okay see uh, this is my uh, so it depends on the random state we have taken it doesn't it, it, no, it has only, nothing to do with the data not only for the random state okay suppose if you use uh, wait a minute okay. linear regression okay see in the fit intercept normalization this is the parameters n job copy uh, in the linear regression uh, there are three or four parameters only okay so you can use this one and with the help of this one you can increase your uh, uh, increase your accuracy okay so not only for the random mm. state you can increase your accuracy hello yes talani um yes sir uh, just want to add that uh, uh, outlier is also one of the factor which uh, you means that underfitting and overfitting happens due to which yes that someone was asking na data is responsible for it or not yes data is also responsible yes data is also responsible for uh, you know how we can find the overfitting and underfitting so with the help of accuracy we can find data is yes, also re uh, responsible for the overfitting and underfitting if you uh, if you sir, in your uh, yes. what i what i meant was like to understand what it takes to uh, overcome this underfitting and overfitting i knew that data is also in a way responsible for overfitting and yes. underfitting i was thinking maybe the uh, lesser sample size or uh, you know not uh having too many missing values or something these things would obviously affect the uh, oh, this overfitting and underfitting but i wanted to know what it takes to overcome that like is there anything we can do about that i was thinking if if it depends uh, if we can take a random state uh, value uh, in such a way that we can avoid these issues i was asking that question yes yes you can actually you can take the there are uh, things like mean mode medium in that if you took the median then you can overcome that uh, overfitting uh, problems wait a minute suppose <clears throat> uh, suppose you have a data like 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay and uh, one gap one gap and then 7 okay and then 100 also so how you can fill this one any idea maybe we can take the average of the uh, rest of the data and uh, without compromising on that average we can fix a value for that no if you take a average then it will give you the overfitting also because 100 is a outlier oh okay. yes yes. Uh, yes. I, yeah. yes wait a wait a minute guys yes <clears throat> so we take the median okay or you can remove the outlier also if you can uh, if you can remove then you can remove okay so remove this outlier then take the mean okay and uh, uh, suppose uh, decision tree in the decision tree uh, don't need to remove the outliers okay 
so fill uh, fill the uh, fill your null values with the help of median okay if in your data any outlier is present then fill your data with the median okay now clear yes sir yes in the decision tree also decision tree random forest you, uh, there is no need to remove the outliers okay so you can fill with the median if uh, in uh, data if in your data there is no outliers are present then you can use the mean then you can fill your this value okay outlier means the uh, value which is uh, like very uh, outside the range yes okay. uh, outside the range uh, okay guys please uh, rejoin the meeting then i will tell you how to uh, find the outliers okay yes yes because meeting going to be off okay <laughs>